I am so pleased to welcome Morgan Henderson, who is the Public Relations and Marketing Manager for Ripple Glass, and she's going to tell us all about the recycling of glass today. She cultivates strong community relationships and leads local marketing efforts, including the management of all social media accounts for Ripple. Uh, she coordinates and executes <clears throat> educational opportunities and community outreach. Here we are. <laughs> uh, while highlighting Ripple's various glass recycling programs across our area. So, hi everybody. Uh, I am so glad to be with you. Thank you for that introduction. I really appreciate it. And just a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Ripple Glass here? Okay, you all are awesome. This is going to be a pro group. I can feel it. But um, hopefully I will be able to teach you some, some new things. So just a brief history of glass recycling in the Kansas City area. A lot of folks don't know this, but back in the early 2000s, glass was actually removed from your curbside recycling bin. So they were like, you know what? We don't want glass and paper and plastic mixed together anymore. Glass, get out of there. Which was actually a good idea to do, but unfortunately at the time there wasn't another outlet for glass. So it was going straight into the landfill at that point. And same time, Boulevard Brewing Company was really taking off. They were becoming super popular and they were manufacturing millions of glass bottles every year. And unfortunately those bottles were all the going traits the landfill. So the founder of Boulevard, John McDonald, he got together with other local organizations and they were like, this is a huge problem and we're contributing to this problem pretty heavily. So what are we gonna do about it? We need to, to do something here. So they had to answer the question, how were they going to reduce glass waste in Kansas City and the Midwest as a whole? Because as you can imagine, glass is heavy, so it gets expensive to ship long distances. So they decided, okay, we are going to collect and process, which is another word for recycle, the glass locally. And then we're going to send that recycled glass to end users. And thankfully, the Cohen Corning, the fiberglass insulation manufacturer, just over in Kansas City, Kansas, they were fully on board. They wanted our recycled glass. I'll get into that a little more in just a few minutes here. But um, they are an awesome partner of ours, as is our dog group, which is a bottle manufacturer just down in Oklahoma. So they manufacture new bottles like the ones that Boulevard Brewing Company uses. So once those things were settled and decided upon, Ripple Glass was officially founded in 2009. And the first thing that needed to be done, um, we had to build a processing facility, obviously, to actually recycle the glass, because what good is collecting glass if there's nowhere to actually recycle it, right? So that was our first step. So our big high-tech processing facility is over in East Kansas City, Missouri, not far from here now. So that's where our, our plant is located. And then the next step was to put these big purple bins all across town. So we currently have over 100 of the purple bins across the KC metro area, and they're completely free to use. Almost all of them are open 24-7. If they're not, it's because they're in a specific recycling center that has specific um, but they're open. So uh, we try to make these as convenient as we can for folks. And early on, it we decided and it was clear that the best places for our purple bins were typically grocery stores and liquor store parking lots. Because as you can imagine, you go in and you purchase glass items from inside there. And so kind of get the cycle going. Once you use those glass items, you go recycle it and you purchase more inside. So I would say the majority of our bins at this point are located in grocery store parking lots. And so these are what the majority of our bins look like, right? You all have seen those around town, I, I guess. But last year, we got to work with uh, local uh, artists, and they designed these incredible um, uh, artworks that go on to tin, actually, tin bins. So each design, uh, we put on two different bins. So we just think these are so beautiful and cool, and they're Kansas City themed, um, and they are currently rotating around. Um, the Missouri side of town, these were grant funded. So they stay in Missouri, but they bounce around from location to location in Missouri. So I don't know if anybody's seen one of these yet, but you might um, in the near future as they kind of shift around from, from different uh, bin locations. And so under the Ripple Glass umbrella, we have four different programs. We have our drop-off program, which is the big purple bin program that I I spoke about already. And we also have a commercial program and that's the top right hand corner uh, photo there. And we take that truck and that trailer around to different bars and restaurants. There, um, and we collect all the glass that they use in the bars and restaurants. As you can imagine, there's a 
a good amount of glass to be um, taken from bars and restaurants around town. So we uh, are growing that program every day and get a new commercial customer, it seems, which we love. Um, we're also in different apartments and condos as well. So we collect glass from uh, multifamily housing. And we've also now gotten into curbside glass pickup. We are kind of moving slowly with this, but um, as of late, we are now in Roland Park, Kansas. The whole citywide, we, we dropped off these purple bins, you can see right here, the little home bins to each resident. And now we do a curbside pickup there. Uh, the first five days of every month, we go around Roland Park. And for us, the easiest way to kind of get involved with curbside pickup, because we know that's convenient, is to go through cities because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to do kind of one-off houses here and there. So we kind of need the whole city involved. So it is helpful when um, when different city councils and city administrators are aware of us and want us uh, in their communities as well. Um, but we also work with different curbside glass pickup partners. And I think you were mentioning um, Glass Bandit that is now called Crush Glass. They are a little company that goes around and picks up curbside and they're kind of able to do those one-off houses a little bit more easily than we are and they ultimately bring that glass to our our plant so all of the glass that gets collected in whichever way shape or form still comes to our processing facility in East Kansas City Missouri um, our last program here is our regional program this program is so big that it gets its own slide so early on when we started Ripple back in 2009 it was clear that other communities outside of Kansas City also were struggling with the same problem we were. So we were getting calls and emails all the time from cities and communities outside of Kansas City, like, mm, we also have nowhere to put our glass, like, can you all recycle it for us? So we were like, no problem. But as I mentioned, glass is heavy, so it's expensive to ship long distances, right? So what we do with our regional communities and pro that program is we wait until, or the communities wait until they have about 25 tons worth of glass built up in their community. And then they load the, that amazing amount of tonnage into a big, big truck. And they ship that down to us in Kansas City or up to us. And just for reference, our purple bins here, they hold about six tons. So the, the sorry, the regional program, like I said, wait, waits until it gets about 25 tons worth to make it sort of worth their they're wild to ship it down to us. So, um, and over half of the glass actually that we recycle now comes from communities and cities outside of Kansas City, which is pretty impressive considering we started in Kansas City, but now we really um, have taken it, taken glass recycling to the whole region, which we love. And we're in over 100 communities in nine different states um, at the moment and always looking to grow. So this slide here, it's a little bit busy, but essentially it's saying that when you mix glass with all the other materials, paper and plastic and all of that, 40% of the glass still goes to the landfill, which is why I mentioned earlier, it was actually a good thing that they removed glass from the curbside recycling stream way back in the early 2000s. Like that was a good move, but there just needed to be an outlet for glass, which is where we came in a little bit later. But the middle portion of this shows that when you say take out paper from the mix, 10% of the glass still goes to the landfill. But when you collect glass alone, which is what we do at Ripple, completely alone on its on its own, 98% of that glass gets recycled still. And I think that 2% just accounts for pieces that either are stuck to other material or just a little bit of waste that, that ends up not getting recycled at our plant. But for the most part, every single shard, it seems, gets recycled at our plant. So we're really proud of that. Also, I feel like it's it's kind of reassuring knowing that at least with glass, when you put it into the purple bin, it goes straight to be recycled. We know where it's going. We witnessed it get recycled. Whereas sometimes other materials, you're just not exactly sure what's happening to it after you recycle it, which is a shame. But at least glass, you can kind of rest assured knowing it, it actually is getting recycled. So so why is it important to recycle glass? Well, glass is a really cool material. I know I'm a little biased because I work for Ripple Glass, but unlike other materials, glass can actually be recycled forever and ever infinitely without ever losing quality. So paper and plastic, the more you recycle it, ultimately it breaks down after a certain amount of time, but glass can be recycled forever and it's still uh, great quality. So it's a really cool material and it's makes it an extra shame when it ends up in the landfill because of 
what could have been. <laughs> so, um, so that's why we like to share our story and spread the word as well, among other reasons. But also just recycling in general creates up to 10 times more jobs than landfilling, which I obviously love because I work for a recycling company. So yay. Um, and then just small amounts of glass really do make a big impact. As you can see here in this graphic, one recycled bottle equals one new bottle. So it it really is a great, a great ratio there, but also a kind of a fun fact, 714 recycled bottles equals enough fiberglass insulation to insulate an entire attic. Very random fact, but kind of interesting that just that, that amount of bottles can insulate a whole attic. A few other uh, kind of fun facts here about why recycling glass is so important. For every six tons of recycled glass, so basically one purple bin's worth, when one purple bin of glass gets recycled, one ton of carbon dioxide is reduced. So it really has a huge impact when just one, even one purple bin gets recycled. Um, also, more than one ton of natural resources is conserved for every ton of glass recycled. So if you weren't aware, which I wasn't before I started, but glass in its raw state, it's made from sand, um, soda ash, limestone, and feldspar. So essentially using a recycled or recycling your glass means you don't have to dig for those materials and basically waste natural resources because just use the glass that's already been made. So also just recycling glass produces less air pollution, less water pollution than creating the new glass from raw materials, like I just said. So one more fun fact here, recycling one glass bottle saves enough electricity to light a 100 watt light bulb for four hours. So super random. I'm sure you all have always been curious about that, but now you know. So especially since we use those light bulbs now, never. There you go. I know, right? <laughs> so, so yes, recycling even one bottle or jar really does make a, a big impact, but probably the, the most questions we get at Ripple um, is from folks asking what can they recycle? Just kind of for the most part, they, they are really detailed or unique questions that um, that we're happy to answer. But thankfully, not only is recycling glass so important, it's so easy to, it is the easiest material to recycle. There's really not a whole lot of confusion because we can take any color, bottle or jar, any size, shape, the labels can still stay on. Even the tops can stay on if they're stuck on a jar or something like that. Um, it doesn't need to be rinsed out either. My mom likes to rinse out her bottles and jars because she's like, it's smelling up the garage. But if you if you don't want to, you totally don't have to. It can still be gross and, and dirty and it's no problem for us. Um, drinking vessels, if you ever drop or, or break a wine glass or a water glass at home, just carefully kind of get that together and we'll still take the broken glass. So it's it's just super simple. Um, candle jars, even with leftover wax inside, we can take that. A lot of folks don't realize that, but um, cosmetic bottles and jars, anything with makeup or lotion that's in glass, totally cool. Um, and then windows and glass shower doors and tabletops. A lot of the time, I feel like in the summer when folks are renovating or something breaks outside or whatnot, um, we get calls about that. So that can go straight into our purple bin, or if it's too big to fit, um, you can actually take it straight to our processing plant and somebody there will help. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see the cosmetic jars. They yes. often have metal or plastic or coated plastic or something. Yeah. And if you can take off any non-glass from it, from the item, that's great. If not, it's okay. It will shatter and come off in our process. But like the metal lids or stuff like that, we we recycle that separately at our plant. So once the glass ends up shattering, it makes it a bit easier to obviously filter out the non-glass items. But we always say if it's possible to remove anything non-glass, that's great. But um, if not, it's also okay. So what we can't accept, I think what we see most in our purple bins that does not belong would be cardboard boxes and trash bags. Even though it's labeled on our purple bins, no boxes or bags, sometimes it slips or people just throw it in anyway. But um, but yeah, so those do not belong in our, our bins. But um, also things like porcelain and ceramic and milk glass uh, in China, those things kind of might shatter like glass and seem a little bit like glass, but they're actually made of stone. And why that's important is because stone melts at a much higher temperature than our recycled glass. So, you know, how I mentioned we send most of our recycled glass goes to Owens Corning. 
I am spilling it too for the people. Um, well, if we send, hold on a second, this is recycled glass and this gets sent to this company to be made into fiberglass insulation, right? So if there are little pieces of ceramic or porcelain in there, it's gonna melt at a different temperature. So when Owen's Corning goes to melt the glass that we send them and spin it up into this stuff, um, it will melt at a different temperature and basically certain pieces in there will kind of gum up and not melt properly. So they do not want that stuff for sure. Owen's Corning is like, no, no, thank you. We need all of the, the glass to melt equally. So um, also mirrors, we get that question a lot, but mirrors are not see-through obviously. And a pretty good rule of thumb for glass recycling is if you can hold it up to the light and see through it, we can probably take it for the most part. So uh, mirrors, they... I'll show you a video in just a minute here that kind of explains how we have these optical sorters or laser beams essentially that kind of scan all of the glass. And if they shoot a laser beam through a piece of something that isn't see-through, it'll shoot a puff of air and it basically gets that out of the, the stream really, really quickly. It's incredible how it works. But basically if it saw a piece of mirror glass or mirror period, it would not recognize it as glass. So it wouldn't get recycled. So that was a long, long-winded way of saying we don't take mirrors, but um, laminated glass, like windshields, obviously glass, but there's actually a layer of plastic in between too. So obviously it doesn't shatter on you like normal glass if a pebble hits, hits your windshield, which is good, but we unfortunately can't separate that out just yet. We're kind of looking into that, but um, Pyrex, that's a toughie because obviously it's clear, right? And it sure as heck seems like glass, but it also melts at a much higher temperature. Um, I think, you know, you can cook with it and put really hot things in it as opposed to normal glass. So no Pyrex either. The white dishware kind of would shatter like glass, but it's, it's not see-through and it's actually not glass either. And then light bulbs and TVs, we get those questions quite a bit, but they, there's actually not a whole lot of glass in those. It's mostly kind of the technology and the plastics and metals that come with it. So there are places to recycle those, but just not, not in our purple bins. So um, one time we even found a toilet in one of our bins. So if you all are ever thinking porcelain throne, can that go in there? It cannot. So I don't even know how somebody hoisted it up and in there. That was kind of impressive in itself, but we do not want that. So yes, no, thank you. I have a question oh, with yes. respect to the laminated glass because yes. a lot of modern windows are double paned and they are laminated. Yeah. For they the, often have, mm -hmm. but they're often laminated around a... Uh, an air cushion that's uh -huh. because there's a metal strip in the middle. Yeah. So are those recyclable? And that's not? probably okay. It's a little bit different than just the whole layer of windshield glass. Right. We typically, yeah, exactly. We typically are able to take most window glass. Okay. Um, and unless also like you're a, a manufacturing, a window manufacturer that has just truckloads oh, of that sure. type, that might end up being a, a bit of a problem, well, they but need to take that to their own or something. Right. They may need to, right. yeah, we may need to ask our plant manager about that, but for the most part, the, the few windows that folks kind of go through or, or switch out in their homes, is no problem for us. So good question though. Yeah. Let me know too, if you guys have it, think of anything else throughout the presentation or after we're getting close to the end here, but um, what happens to the glass? So this is a picture from our, our processing plant, which I'm going to show you a video in just a second here. But um, this is the inside of our plant with all the conveyor belts that take the, the broken glass through. Um, this stuff right here is essentially the brown glass that gets separated out and made into the new bottles, like the ones that Boulevard uses. So like right up there. And then this glass, which I kind of already showed you all, which is the majority of what we um, produce actually ends up going to Owens Corning where they make it into this fiberglass insulation here, which I always laugh at this. I feel like that looks like ham in a really weird way, but it's not. It's fiberglass insulation. So, so whenever you all go to the purple bin and drop stuff off, just know your glass is either going to be made into new glass bottles or fiberglass insulation. So that's what happens to it. Yeah. So you just take it to sorted and crushed. So you don't, yep. you don't melt. Exactly. Yep. So we you're get just it. Doing mechanical yep. Stuff. We size yep. it, we crush it, we clean it. Yep. And then we send, you'll see in the video in a second, but yes. about five huge, at least, truckloads a day over right. to Owens Corning wow. with this stuff. And they want more. They always want more from us too, because 
if you think about it, they love our recycled glass because it melts at a lower temperature than raw glass. Therefore, they get to save money on their energy costs because they're using a product that requires less energy of them. So they're like, give us more recycled glass, please. So we're always looking to try to spread the word even more to the community and get more glass in because there's such a demand for it. So, okay, perfect. Too loud when somebody gets talking. Before 2009, Kansas City hardly recycled any of their glass waste. The average person uses nearly 80 pounds of glass each year. This glass can be recycled over and over again, but most of it goes to the landfill. When we recycle glass, it means less material goes into our landfills. Making new glass out of recycled glass saves raw materials like sand and keeps us from having to mine for new materials. Since glass melts at a lower temperature than raw materials, using recycled glass to make new glass uses 30% less energy. Finally, using recycled glass cleans up our air. Every ton of recycled glass used means that we reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 600 pounds. To tell the story of how Ripple Glass solved Kansas City's glass recycling problem, we first have to tell you about its founder, Boulevard Brewing Company. A Kansas City brewery, Boulevard Brewing Company was looking to reduce their waste. Boulevard found that there was no local option to recycle their glass waste, even though there were local manufacturers that could use recycled glass to make their products. Boulevard also found that for waste glass to be reused by a manufacturer, there had to be a processor that cleaned the glass of things like paper, metals, and plastics. This processing facility did not exist in Kansas City. And because there was no processor available, not very much glass was being collected for recycling in Kansas City. Boulevard got tired of being part of the problem and joined local businesses and community organizations to start Ripple Glass in 2009. Ripple Glass did two things at the same time. It created a collection network for glass in Kansas City and built a processing facility to clean the glass into what we call furnace ready color. Before we take a tour of this processing facility, let's show you how Ripple collects and transports glass for recycling. In late 2009, big purple bins began to appear in parking lots throughout Kansas City. That's me. Thanks to local businesses who volunteer as hosts, residents and businesses began to fill these bins with beer bottles, wine bottles, pickle jars, and all sizes and colors of glass. When a bin gets full, Ripple sends a truck to pick it up and deliver the glass to our processing facility. Because businesses like bars and restaurants use a lot of glass, Ripple started a commercial recycling program for businesses. Purple gold carts are sent behind businesses and picked up weekly. And because Kansas City wasn't the only community in the area to suffer from the lack of processing facility, Ripple started accepting recycled glass containers from cities and towns and surrounding states. Remember, collecting used glass was no good without a facility to process it and make it into furnace-ready cult. So, Ripple Glass built a facility to do just that. Let's take a look. When recycled glass arrives at the facility, it's weighed and dumped into outdoor storage areas. <laughs> Processing the glass begins when a loader scoops it up and then drops it into a hopper, about one ton at a time. The glass flows onto a conveyor belt and into the facility, where magnets and a human eye are used to remove non-glass items like bags, boxes, and cans. The glass is then fed into a crusher and broken into small pieces. It then passes through a dryer to remove moisture from the labels and a delabeling machine that uses paddles to gently remove the labels. Once the labels are removed, the glass is ready for optical sorting. This computer-driven machine uses beams of light to find items that are not glass. Every second, 15 bottles or jars run past this amazing machine. When a non-glass item is fired, the machine fires a strong pulse of air to reject it. The glass then moves on to another optical sorter programmed to look for colors. 
this machine looks for brown or amber glass. Once again, when it sees a piece of amber glass, it fires a strong puff of air to separate it from the rest of the glass. This amber glass is used to make new glass bottles, including those used by Boulevard Brewing Company. The remaining glass is then fed into a machine that crushes it down to the size of coarse sand. We call this furnace ready color. Each day, trucks are filled with this color and delivered to a nearby manufacturer, where the color is used to make fiberglass insulation, helping to create more energy efficient homes and buildings. Since Ripple Glass appeared on the scene, KC's glass recycling rate has climbed from 3% to 20% and continues to grow. We've made a lot of progress, but with your help, we can do much more. If you haven't started recycling your glass, visit our website to find a location near you. If you're already recycling, thank you. Please help us spread the word to your friends, family, and coworkers. More recycled glass means a better, cleaner, lighter future for all of us. Even a small act can create a big ripple. Every bottle counts. Right. We almost won an Oscar for that. Oh, I'm just kidding. I mean, we could have, I think, but the insulation itself, once it's kind of lived its life, I think we asked them about that. We went on a tour of Owens Corning, which was incredible. It is such a, I mean, their their facility is exponentially bigger than ours, but it's just really cool what they do there. Um, but but once it's, you know, kind of run its course and the walls and the attic and basements, it's pretty to put, I think so. Good question though. We do get that a lot, but, um, but yeah, so we just ship them the recycled glass and they do their whole thing to make it into the, the wow. cotton candy. So. That, that ends up going into folks' homes. They, they ship out so much of the, right. That's what I was saying. They just, it, it once it's kind of fulfilled, it's, his life in the homes. Um, is it buried? Is it a good question? I'm not sure what they do with it when they replace it. And, it actually um, does break down naturally. Okay. When it gets to that point. Yeah. Because it's it's been more than so. Uh huh. This yes. is a I I used to teach for part of 17 years at the university near Corning. Oh, North, where uh huh. Bones Corning originated, cool. and I worked. Our students who did glass yes. science and oh, awesome. like glass 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 press, but, and also the glass of water. Yes, yeah, and uh, it's really interesting because once you get specialized yeah. like that, right. making it possible to create filaments which are then yes. produced in mm -hmm. as fiberglass, it actually becomes more degradable once it's exposed from the mm -hmm. element. Mm -hmm. And it's also one of the reasons why they don't use plastic as uh, the you, know, you can see a roll of the paper. It's in fact okay, yeah. paper because the paper also yes. If they mm -hmm. back with plastic, then it would be yeah. a problem. That makes total um, sense. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so my question uh -huh. is about because one of the things that I think is absolutely wonderful, and uh, there's a local Kansas City manufacturer who's doing this, uh -huh. is using recycled glass to build countertops and yes, and glass bricks and all the right. kinds of other things of furniture. Uh -huh. And you can get it to order. Do you also work with them? Um, recycled surfaces is I think the company you're talking uh -huh. about. And Mike Patterson, who founded that company, was actually the president of Ripple. Uh -huh. So yes, we work with them and that is another option. The bulk of what we um, have recycled and ship away goes to Owens Corning, but yes, absolutely, that's another option. And those countertops look phenomenal, and all the stuff that they were able to do fantastically. Yes. Dirty. I mean, they're yeah, it used to be that they scratched easily, but they've changed yeah. the, the technology. It's really on. impressive. No, we love that too. So, that is an option, it's just not like the the primary sure. um end use of, of the really last year. Year. Yeah, yeah, but it's super cool. I think it's amazing too. And they can kind of separate out the colors even more. Yeah. It's it's awesome. So yes, that is definitely another another um place where recycled glass can go. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That's perfect. But um okay, so a few tips to just make glass recycling extra easy that we've kind of found. Just designating a spot in your home or school for specifically for glass, as you all probably do, but you seem like avid recyclers, which I love. So just having a place where you, you know your glass goes there so you're not confused. Kind of when I when I speak with people who haven't really recycled glass before or aren't huge recyclers in general, it's helpful 
for them, especially to have a specific separate place. Um, so you all kind of, I think this is old news to you, but um, we also sell our totes, this purple little home bin here, we call totes on our website. If you all ever are interested in that, you can go to our website and order one, but obviously you can put your glass in anything at all, bag, a box, whatever you have, but those are pretty sturdy and, and handy. And um, also printing the, what can I recycle flyer from our website, which is essentially those two slides that I showed you all of what you can and can't recycle. That's kind of handy to put near the place where you have your, your glass only recycling. So if you're considering putting a toilet into that little bin, you think, wait, that's not on the list. So yes, that can be handy too to have. And then finding your closest drop-off location, which I'll show you guys in the next slide, but I think you all are pretty aware um, is always helpful also. And, and our website has a, a map where you can put in your zip code and all the nearby purple bins will pop up to you if you're ever not in your normal area and wanna find a purple bin. Um, and last thing, just tell your friends and family, like I spoke about, you know, it's always helpful to even just share, share the word with one person. You know, when I started working at Ripple, gosh, over four years ago now, I told my family, my friends, everybody. And sadly, a lot of them did not realize how easy it is and important it is to recycle glass. So just trying to spread the word as, as best you can is always really helpful. Um, so the nearby bin locations to you all, we've got the UMKC, we call it Recycling Center. It's in the NPR um, parking lot. If you all have been over there, use that one. And then we've got the front first um, bin as well that's down there. So you guys are kind of right in between those two. Um, and then we've got several others around this way, but those those are your two closest purple bins. Um, and each of our purple bins, I don't think I mentioned this, but gets picked up at a different frequency. So some of our purple bins are so popular that they, we have one that gets picked up every single Monday and Friday, like bursting at the seams. I, it's so impressive that it can fill up so frequently. And then we have others that maybe get picked up every 45 days or longer, a little bit shorter. So it just totally depends on, on the bin itself and how um, popular it is. But yeah, and that is about it. Uh, I don't know if y'all have social media or want to follow us on that, but we try to post some kind of interesting, fun things to make recycling and black recycling specifically um, interesting and and so, yeah, do, do you all have any other questions? I'm happy to answer anything else. Yes. Is it possible to get tours at the sorting and crushing facility? Good question. We have given tours before. Um, it's typically when you have a group large enough, like, like an organization or sometimes a business, but we don't typically do it for a handful of folks um, just because our plant manager and folks over there are so swamped. It kind of wait until we've got a, a big enough group. Um, and we don't give tours to anyone under 18. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other regulations. It is, but it is I know, and it's so, <laughs> I swear, every time I'm over there, I always tell folks that if there is a tour, like, I'm a tour black, if, unless you <laughs> care about getting dusty. I swear, every time I go over there, I am head to toe in black. And I'm like, what am I doing, Morgan? But the the glass when it's crushed and it, there's just so much dust so and it's real loud too but I, I typically recommend especially if it's for you know obviously young school age kiddos just to watch that little tour online because it's quieter less dusty and a little bit safer too but um but that is our our processing plant there that's in the video and um so yes, we occasionally give tours. Again. So glass dust could be quite dangerous to one's lungs. So I'm assuming yeah. that the ventilation system they've got that it. people are wearing yeah. protective co coverings. Yes. And yeah, so. and they've got like, some really heavy duty, several tubes for lack of a better word, and uh, that filters out the, the dust. And then we've got a big, it all goes somewhere too. And it's, it's really, <laughs> clearly I'm terrible at describing this, but yes, it is, a, it is an issue. So we try and make it as, clean as we can and we've got folks that are basically sweeping the actual you know floor every day and getting stuff up and out and yeah but but it can be um it can be a lot at times so yeah we try and keep it as safe as we possibly can over there though so we haven't had any I don't know any issues with any of our awesome folks over at the plant so we've got about 20 some folks that work at the plant, including drivers and folks who actually manage the, the teams of the plant. Um, and then in our team, where I live, is 
Um, <laughs> we're located in um, the Crossroads District, so not not too far from from here, really. But uh, there's about six or seven of us that work there. Um, so we're really quite a small team for what we do. Um, but we we also last last year, last September maybe, we were actually acquired by a company called Strategic Materials Incorporated. And they're they're actually North America's biggest glass recycler. And they essentially acquired us because no one else really does our purple band program around the country and even in Canada and Mexico. So they acquired us in an, in the hope that we would be able to kind of replicate our program across the country and beyond. So that is what we're working toward now. So hopefully we will be have, have our real program like we have here in cities nationwide moving forward. So that's kind of exciting for us. But, but yeah, so it seems to me that the future is to move back towards having glass containers instead of a lot of right. <laughs> right. Uh, is there work being done by that industry, your industry that's yeah. trying to encourage more. Uh, I know, great question. We definitely go to all the conferences and try to get the word out of how yeah. obviously we we want this to happen too. And it's just kind of a tough, it can be tough convincing, you know, the big corporations and manufacturers to go with glass, but it's better for the environment. It tastes better too. Mm -hmm. I think everybody would, everything out of glass just tastes better and fresher. So <laughs> yes, that is our hope to really, you know, convince and and get folks to go that well, route. Clearly, consumers need to yes. purchase if they've got a choice. I know, right? Glass. Right. It's, that that is ideal, but can be sometimes more expensive too. So it's yes. Or if you take a look at like Chateau, right? Yeah. Dairy, mm -hmm. You know, they have a deposit right. in their bottles, which yeah. then you get back. And yes. I'm from New York, uh -huh. and which has had. You know, for decades and decades, a deposit system yep. for bottles, plastic mm -hmm. and glass. Yes. And um and cans too, mm -hmm. actually. And so what you do, and all of those those um facilities are always in uh grocery stores exactly. most of the time and they're automated and you get your money back with the deposits, which um but it also, I mean, most of us are of an age in this room who remember putting glass bottles out exactly. and they were they, they, they weren't crushed and recycled yeah, that way exactly. they were reused and for and, sure which is even cheaper frankly than yeah. recycling I know and chat we love chateau no, like that is and that is the way to go in general with the there are very few states in the U.S. that have bottle bills, yeah. but the ones yeah. that do like I, Iowa is one of in just the recycling rates are through the roof there right. because Obviously, people want to get a little something back for and obviously help the environment, but that's the way to go. It would be ideal if that was across the board in all the states, because I think we'd see some real awesome numbers recycling wise. But um, but thank you for sharing that. That's really interesting and right on. And I lived in Europe for a while in Germany. Oh, yeah, same about it recycling. is. Are you from Germany? Uh, I'm from Holland. I oh, just yeah. came back from Holland uh, last uh, yesterday. Yes. And one of the things that I was told uh -huh. is that the recycling rates because of the deposits yes. have been taken away, have been dropping significantly mm -hmm. and uh, in the last half a year. Yeah. Throughout Holland, they have the full requirement now for deposits on plastics, yes. uh, bottles, mm -hmm. uh, glass, things like that. I know that is, uh, Europe's got it down to a science. They know how to do it. And it's, I, I remember being in Germany and take, yeah, every type of thing, you put it in the little thing, it would take it away and you get a little receipt with your yep. deposit. It was amazing. So, so in, in the UK, they yeah. don't have deposits on, mm -hmm. but what they have is every single community, and I, yeah. um, I've spent a lot of time in Wales, and they're uh -huh. obsessed in Wales about this. Yes. Every single community has laws about, so, but the problem is that you have to come, that they have you know, food composting, right. and clear glass bottles, and brown bottles, and green bottles, oh, yeah. and, this, yeah. oh, and yeah. certain kinds of paper, and certain uh -huh. kinds of, and each one is separated out, yes. and you have 
So like half of their car parks are taken up with these recycling bins, which are insane yeah. because this, if you're renting a cottage or something, uh -huh. and you have this list of things that you're not supposed to put in the garbage. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but it's, it's super efficient. Yes, it um, is. And, and I, I happen to have a situation where I'm composting every, you know, I'm yeah. doing all my composting, my yard waste, I'm recycling yes. class, I've got the general awesome. recycling. So yes. when I, on, re, on garbage day, my, my mm -hmm. sidewalk is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, it just goes to show when, when you do it correctly like that, there really is very little trash. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and I think people, especially in America, it's like, Everything is trashed, right? It's like put in the trash can. So I wish somebody would recycle dog food. That, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a good um, business opportunity. Um, in a little spot, you have to have a backyard almost, yeah. and you feed it to the opossums. Yeah, and the opossums so. will keep your gardens, and that's what the north of Keep your gardens completely free of. Uh, edible and they can eat anything. Yes, right. Including ticks and the right. da, da, yeah. da, da. So, so the possums eat food? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they don't see cat food because they think, you know, it's delicious, <laughs> but that's all for the delicacy. Yeah, but you said that's good for, for the dog. <laughs> so just leave it. So I always leave the. the yeah, uh, this the is really late. No, no, this is great. I love this. The, the opossum food. I leave it there. And oh, the, so the possums will, yes, they're that, that, recycling that, that, it in their own way. Just a little society. Oh my gosh. That that makes so much sense though. That, that is what you have some stuff. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Yep. The standard poople. That's my my mom joke of the day. I'm not a mom, but I mean something that anyway. Well, does anybody else have anything for me though? Did you all learn anything that you didn't know before? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just I'm very good. And I'm so glad because I know you all know what you're doing here. And so I yeah. we so appreciate that. I forgot to mention too this. This just kind of shows how the glass comes into our facility, all gross and labely and dirty. And then ultimately it's either separated out, made into bottles, or separated out, made into five boxes. But I think it's very important for me uh, when I first talked to you way back. Yeah. It, it's what happens. Uh, I've always recycled over yes. 100 years ago when I was a kid, <laughs> we had deposit on all the bottles. And right. that was it. That's a, how we could put people. Yes, exactly. To, the brewery and yes. get money. Uh -huh. <laughs> but to know what happens and right. see all the good it is. Mm -hmm. So you get to get this out. Yes. Thank you for saying that. I think I think it's really cool too. And that's probably when I do these presentations, what folks are most interested in. Like I didn't realize that's what happened in my glass because you all do the, the best part and that's dumping it into our purple bins, but you don't always think oh, what happens to this so yeah. so yeah it is pretty interesting and it's I it's just so reassuring to know like our drivers pick up these bins take them straight to our plant dump them out and it starts the whole process so they it all is getting recycled so yeah. one of the things that getting that 20 percent you know mm -hmm. this is one of those that probably was an almost immediate sort of situation where people were like, oh, great, yes. glass recycling, yeah. and they started right. doing that. And uh -huh. then, like me, I just got tired of schlepping my glass, so I just sit the place. Oh, okay, glass vents does this. Uh -huh. um, and, and then when I had my bright yellow bin up, and uh -huh. I suddenly started noticing that several yeah. of my neighbors were like, what is That's that? Cool. And then they got uh -huh. their yellow bins. Exactly. And, and then it's, you know, it's also amusing to see how yeah. many people have after two weeks of yes. full bins. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. To, you know, uh -huh. other people. But yes. Um, uh, yes, we all those are our best you know the best job security. <laughs> yes. But how you know, what kinds of strategies are you thinking about not just going to the schools? Yeah. Because I mean these kids are probably all about this. They right. think it's a great idea. They go home to their parents and they say, 
we need to start recycling mm -hmm. our glass. And yeah. their parents look at them and say, no. Yeah. I know. Um, it's definitely a, it's something that's important, the education piece of it. Um, kind of the other marketing side is also obviously very important to spread the word. We've kind of found at times we're preaching to the choir a little bit. Mm -hmm. Folks who are interested in us and who we, right. you know, see at different events or whatnot are pretty familiar with us already. Um, that's where, you know, the next idea was to set out more purple bins in just really make it as convenient as possible. Obviously curbside is the most convenient, but if folks see our purple bin and know what it is, they will hopefully start doing it. But it's kind of a combo of hitting it from all angles, whether it's education, marketing, the physical bins, adding more and more, but it's it shouldn't be as tough in my opinion as it is, but it, it can still be really tough. So we're still working through ways to increase that in like a, a big chunk, a big way, but yeah, I, it, it can be tough at times. So how much do you think those beans cost? Or you know, a good much? question. I think they're possibly might be up to like $24 now and it's free shipping. So we tip it to your, to your home. So I want to say it's maybe $24. The moment prices on everything have just gone up on our end too, to, to get these little bins. So I, I think it's that, but our website is rippleglass.com has um, when you just kind of scroll down on the main page, you'll see it and um, can order one that way. But um, but yeah, they, they come in handy at times. Here's how you crush glass and say whopping 80 bucks a year. Yeah, it's year. super it's not, it's not It's not expensive. Mm -hmm. And they come out every other week. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you have a lot of glass you need to recycle exactly. every other week, well, yes. I wind up just putting it out like once a month because I don't. Right. You know, uh -huh. We found that in Roland Park too. There are certain homes that are like, we need another bin. <laughs> and then others that, you know, barely have anything when we come. The party in Yeah, exactly. <laughs> those are our favorite. But yeah. since you're into recycling, I saw you seeing those trucks break uh, work with that glass uh -huh. and recently having to replace a tire oh. because of glass. How do you? How much recycling of tires we do? <laughs> we thankfully don't, we don't mess with tires ever really. If there is, you know, in my four years, actually, there have not been a whole lot of um, flat tires from our class, thankfully, or from, uh, they, they're, as you all have probably seen, occasionally gets some glass around the purple bins themselves yeah. because people either miss or what what happens but um we do have a street sweeping service that we kind of deploy to really do a deep clean around our bins when they get really bad summertime especially too more people yeah. just recycle when the weather's nice and it, it can get rough so if you all ever see that too or see a bin that is overflowing and they should not be feel free to call our our main line and we'll get on it or you can there's our little there. Well, anyway, you can always email me as well, Morgan at rippleglass.com if anything ever comes up. But but yeah, thankfully we haven't had too many issues with hot tires. We've had a, a I wasn't yeah. thinking of my tires. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about those guys that oh, with yeah. the haulers go yes. through glass all the time. I know. Well, it's kind of cool. Our our crushers that we have and then they scoop up the glass, they have like really I'm trying to remember now what their tires are made of. They're not normal tires. Okay. They're like super <laughs> heavy duty, obviously, because they're literally rolling over glass all the time. So that's good at least. And surprisingly, all the trucks that come through there and dump out the glass, really, I don't know if maybe a, a couple times in the past four years, but it is not a common thing, which is good because that would be a huge pain. <laughs> that was happening but often, I can tell but... you that rooster rubber is a rubber... They make rubber mulch and they make it all yes, out of recycled uh -huh. tires. And yes. that is really cool. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's done in the East mm -hmm. Bonds, I think it is. Yeah. And they're a really great company. Too. Uh, a very mobile. I think that's so cool that, I mean, you can do so many cool things with recyclable materials, but the tire, the mulch that they do yeah. for playgrounds and all that stuff yeah. is so cool. So, yeah. And they can't get enough recycling right. tires. Right. 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 Crazy. I tell you, we did a, for Earth Day, our team went out to Columbus, what was it, Columbus Park? No, uh, yeah, actually, I think it was Columbus Park. Anyway, we did a, a PCMO cleanup with yeah. some folks there, and the amount of tires we found chucked into the woods was just like, first of all, if you're going to, it was just a pain because it's like, if you're going to leave stuff, don't, don't chuck it into the woods. Just leave it right there because right. then it's like, now people have to 
it, it's just a huge pain in the, in the butt. But um, anyway, we found a ton of tires there. So uh, people, what are you going to do with them? <laughs> anyway, but thank you all so much, though, for, for having uh, having me and, and listening and having such great questions, too. And if you ever think of anything else, like I said, feel free to email me anytime or um, or next year, too, if you want us to come back and speak or have any other classes or groups you can think of that might be interested. We're always, I love speaking, so. Yes, yeah, and the night. Yeah. You do a great job. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm glad you all did also. Thank you so much. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, all. Was so that, sweet. that there was more that we could do to push people to, because it drives me crazy when I see these huge overflowing bags of stuff that could all be recycled or I don't know it. And the fact that the city is looking to do a, a curbside composting and yes. trying to figure out mm -hmm. who they need to work with to do that mm -hmm. right. is fantastic. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's you know. it's like there's so many hoops to jump through yes. to get and B, it's like it even you know glass especially being so heavy it saves cities so much money because yes. all that yes. glass is not going to the landfill which means the tipping fee at the landfill is not as high we need so really it makes a lot of sense financially yes. to remove glass from the yeah, I about a material that doesn't break down glass mm -hmm. is the ultimate material that doesn't break down yeah so i know it i know i'll uh but think of something else that you all might be able to really like help with i will let you all know for sure because you're such a great group of educated like passionate people so thank you and Girl. No, and you are seasoned and brilliant, yeah, and you. you are awesome. And, and I do. I brought with me some of our reusable bags. Oh, so I want these bags. You can obviously use it for glass if you want, and if you do, you yeah. take it to a purple bin. There's a secret handle on the bottom that you can like shake for glass, <laughs> so that you don't lose it. Yes, and it's got our accepted items, not accepted items oh, on it. Yeah. So it's, it's really handy, and obviously you can use it for grocery whatever you want to. I, I use them all the time for a ton of different things, but um, it's, yeah, it's like, and if you all want more than one too, I've got plenty. So if you want to give one to somebody, I'm going to plenty. I'll take two because yeah. I encourage them. I, I know, I love that. Yes, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I've got a bunch more on there. Yeah, they're either bad or ready. So, you know, I'm not that.